Tonight is July the 17th, 2018, and for all practical purposes, the 833A amplifier is finished and working beautifully. I'm very pleased with it. Let's see if we can scoop in on it just a little bit. It is not on at the moment, so you don't see the red in the plate. But, um, and are the meters, are the, are the, uh, Mercury vapor rectifier is glowing, but let's turn it on and and check that out. Okay, it's now into a dummy load. Let's uh, scoop in on the uh, those beautiful mercury vapor rectifiers. Here's our plate voltage under load, just a little over 3,000, and that's what the plate looks like. Actually, quite healthy. Here's our plate current. Right at whoops, come on now, let's focus. Maybe I'm a little too close. Right at 400 milliamps. And uh, the grid current is like at 50 milliamps. Probably need a light on for that. It is behind a, some screen right there. And uh, I'm thinking about what to put in front of these that would still make it uh, transparent so I'd be able to see them. Cause I uh, I built it like this on purpose so I could so I could see this uh, right here. Let's take a look behind it. Well, I'll show you power output too. Here's the power output. I'm using a uh, 2,500 watt element, so that's 800 watts. Right on the dot. It's what it looks like from behind. We're not driving it right now. The high voltage is off. As you can see the uh, the 833. It's got a vacuum capacitor right up here. There's the tank circuit down there. This is a loading capacitor over here with a couple of Patters on it. Uh, the high voltage uh, plate choke. And the bottom of the power supply. A little crowded down there. <clears throat> but um, uh, this first one is the choke, and then behind that is the uh, power transformer. And just on the other side of that is uh, one of the filter capacitors. It's a 5,000 volt 5 microfarad. And uh, down in here, this is part of the uh, grid bias circuit. <clears throat> this little transformer right there is the 10 volt 10 amp that lights the, uh, the 833 power supply over here, uh, capacitors over here. They're arranged to six to a side because this is a voltage doubler. And the filament transformer is for the 866s are right there. This is a bias adjustment, and here's the bias transformer. There's really nothing particularly fancy about it. I did neutralize it. I don't know if I'm going to be able to show you that neutralize, neutralizing capacitor or not. I think I can. We'll have to go back to the front of it. And then, of course, around there we see the, the two meters up there. But it works very well. I'm real pleased with it. It was, uh, it was a bit of a beast to, uh, to tame. Um, it is grid driven. The uh, gain of the 833A is low, or something like 34, I believe. I'll have to look that up again to know for sure. But um, it was a little bit of a challenge to, to uh, make it not have some sort of squirrely uh, characteristic, but uh, neutralizing it did the job. Let's go back to the front and I'll show you the neutralizer capacitor and how I did it. The neutralizing circuit is, uh, this is a neutralizing capacitor, I've got the power off right now, it's right in here. You can see those two uh, cylindrical plates that screw close together. But what you have to do is you also have to put in right here is an L. There's an inductor right here with a capacitor across it, <clears throat> which is resonant at, on the 20 meter band. This is going to be just a 20 meter amplifier, I'm not even going to try to 
to uh, operate it on other bands but you end up having to make a <clears throat> excuse me a resonant circuit and then this is a, an adjustment right here through that little hole there's a, a trim capacitor in there if you can see it you can't see the capacitor but you might be able to see that rubber grommet and anyway you make all these adjustments <clears throat> excuse me you start out by putting it on the workbench and you put in a signal and then you adjust this right here to residence this L because the, the capacitor across it is fixed and then you start adjust and then you adjust this one or you can set it to about I found out now about 300 picofarad just fixed one and then you start adjusting the uh, neutralizing capacitor until you get the least amount of uh, feed through and uh, from no capacitor from no neutralization to the neutralization level that I've got it I've got the um, I've got it down 40 dB what I do is I use these two instruments over here I've already taken them back turn this guy on you'll see he's set to 14.25 <clears throat> uh, megahertz which is what I, the frequency I neutralized it at and then you watch it up here on, on the spectrum analyzer and you um, you start tuning you could put this to the input or the output you could do it forward or backward it doesn't seem to matter and then you watch the other like if you put this to the input you put this on the output and then you go through the adjustment procedures and you start out with a you know a full size pulse and then you start reducing it as much as you can and I can get it down 40 dB and that seems to have very well stabilized the amplifier I've had a number of QSOs with it and uh, everybody says it sounds just dandy so I'm real pleased with it I'm not going to go into a great uh, bit of detail I don't think that there's anything terribly exciting underneath it uh, underneath the chassis here there's a TR relay the, uh, there is also a um, big 50 ohm 100 watt resistor that came out of a, uh, I don't have it here with me now that came out of a little MFJ small dummy load that I use um, and uh, that's about it it's actually uh, pretty simple under there I don't think we can look up under it with the camera but let me get around there and see yeah I was laying on the floor trying to look up underneath the chassis to, uh, but there's really nothing much to see over there it's kind of hard to see anyway by the way there is a fan right there blow it straight down onto the uh, 833 that's what keeps it cool I think you can see that pretty clearly it's directly above it and it seems to uh, seems to do a pretty good job there's another one over here that I don't have hooked up right now I was blowing it into the cabinet but it seems to have just not necessary and it seems to have just added more uh, more fan noise I do have uh, parasitic chokes. This one's for the plate, and this one's for the grid over there. Um, and that's about it. This is where uh, this is RF input, as you can see. This is the high voltage. I use these Millen connectors. I had a, a good gentleman ask me about did I ever have any trouble with them, and I, the answer is no. I've been using these things for uh, ever since I've been building amplifiers. I've never had any trouble with them. This is a 10 volt 10 amp. This is a filament. This is several control voltages right here. This uh, initiates the uh, TR relay. It uh, brings bias up into it. It brings a negative lead from the power supply up to uh, the plate meter. Uh, this fuse right here is in series with uh, the uh, filament transformer because otherwise the filament transformer would have a 30 amp fuse in it a ground connection I'm a very very big believer in ground connections and of course the RF output I use a uh, solid state optical relay right here doesn't make any clanking noise which is kind of nice and that's about it I have made a couple of mistakes there's there's a few pieces that are uh, have been destroyed one of the things I do uh, when I work on it I always put this guy onto the ground and to make sure that it's discharged I start out with a 10k resistor 
I don't know if you'll see any sparks or not. No, because it's been sitting there long enough to but I always make sure that it's discharged. And then I do that. I make sure that it's completely discharged. And then I unplug it. I turn it off and unplug it before I pull this chassis out. Well, there's been times I've been working on it and I forget and I leave this thing on there. I've left that on there twice and turned the high voltage on and it uh, smokes that relay right there. That's for one thing. Whew! It, uh, it is not, uh, not fun. It's terrifying when you short that, uh, that 3600 volts to ground as it's trying to come up. But that's it. Um, I'm really pleased with it. The first video I showed you, I had a 63% efficiency rate. And now that I have neutralized it, I have a 70% efficiency rate. I don't think I'll go through the details. It's late at night. been working a long time today. I hope you'll take my word on it. Uh, I think one of the challenges of this amplifier is I just wanted to see if I could make the 833 work on 20 meters. It works great works absolutely great like I say it was a bit of a challenge and uh, neutralizing it was the secret to making it very stable it, it has it has no kinks at all let me just go back to the front and I'll show you kind of what I mean um, even though I was convinced I had no kinks the first time uh, what would happen Sometimes when you key it up, let me see if I can get a good picture of this. Watch the MV rectifiers come on down there. It's just that when it had some some, some kinks in it, you'd see them blink every once in a while. You'd just see them do something. Just something dumb would happen. Just just little things. The plate meter would creep. The grid would creep or something. You'd you'd see the plate get more red. Maybe maybe over a period of time, he just had some real kinks in it that were very hard to uh, very hard to understand. But right now, this WA, well, now let's see why am I not modulating it? Oh my goodness, maybe I'm just too tired to be doing this. This thing should should be uh, should be operating. If I uh, can figure out how to operate it. Yeah, a little testing. One, two, three, four. Well, it looks like. Uh, there we go. No? Hello. Well, now it's not working at all. Now, what have I done wrong? Isn't that the pitch when you try to. When you try to show your. Your prize possession here. Probably got the gain turned down all the way or something stupid. Well, let's see, we're in upper sideband. We're into a dummy load. Uh, nothing abnormal over here. That, that was loose. There's our gain. Well, there's nothing to hear. Uh, got our RF gain up all the way. Well, it was working minutes ago. Had a little testing, one, two, three, four. And now I've got no audio at all. I must have a loose connection. Well, I gotta resolve that, don't I? Well, the problem is obvious. I pull this, uh, this goes to the output of the transmitter, transceiver, into the input of the amplifier. I pulled it loose a while ago to, uh, so that wire wouldn't be hanging in the way. Okay, I'll tell you, it's these little problems that'll, that'll bite you the hardest. You just go, what in the world is the problem here? Hello, testing. Hello, testing. <sighs> Whatever. Hello, testing. One, two, three, four. Well, actually, it's working now. Hello, testing one, two, three, four. Hello, testing one, two, three, four. So 
fell into a dummy load. It, it had a uh, one of the issues with this with, with these new rigs that I'm going to complain about a little bit <clears throat> is I have to put this thing in um, in tuner position, and it has to tune itself to the input. Once it's once it does that, it's okay and it's stable. But you could see it was it was searching there for a second to tune itself up. And once it got tuned up, it's okay. I think when I uh, take this thing back to the basement, well, I know I don't have that problem down there because the old Collins S-Line stuff I have down there does not uh, have auto-tune on it. But once the, uh, once the uh, transceiver here tunes itself to the input of the amplifier, then it's okay. So you, you finally saw it, it stabilized there. And uh, now when you pick it up, It'll do the same thing. Hello, testing one, two, three, four. Hello, testing one, two, three, four. It's WA4 QGA testing. So there you go. This is my attempt at the mighty 833 on 20 meters, and uh, it's working great. I might have to do something about that and put a larger bleeder resistor in there. That's why I have to. Uh, uh, discharge it so it's still up at 1500 volts here's what happens <clears throat> here's what you get and here's the way I discharge it and you'll see some some small sparks see those all small sparks there that discharges it and then to make sure it's dead I do that and then I gotta make darn sure I don't forget to take this off because once I if I key it up with this thing on there, man, that is not a happy moment. So there you go. Thanks for watching. Uh, all constructive comments are always welcome in discussions. I hope this uh, helps others in building amplifiers, neutralizing them, whatever. Uh, if you go through a neutralizing procedure, I recommend the older books. Because uh, all too often, some of the newer books are just regurgitations of regurgitations of more regurgitations of somebody that did something back in the 1940s or 50s, if you know what I mean. And sometimes you can glean more from uh, the older books than you can from the new ones.